Hi, everybody. Welcome to our podcast, Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. We finally named it. And today I have a special guest that I want to introduce to everyone, Todd Denmark with Circle of Life Assisted Living, um, one of my favorite contracts. Uh, we've got several uh, communities that we place in your communities, and I just welcome you. Thank oh, you. thank you, Julie. It's a pleasure to be here, and I really like the talk the topic that we're going to be talking about today. Yep, yep. I had you in mind for this topic, um, and we'll talk about why in a little bit. So, Todd, tell me a little bit about your background. Okay. Well, I have uh, 27 years in the long-term care pharmacy business as well as durable medical equipment and in urgent care. So throughout that length of time, I have seen wonderful advancements in medication management, yeah. incredible advance, advancements in regards to uh, medical equipment, and obviously over the last five years, the emerging you know, urgent cares that are popping up all over the place. It's been a, it's been a wonderful ride. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, and I know you and I hear this story all the time or something like it. Um, we'll hear about a family member that is in the hospital for a crisis. Maybe they were found, uh, they had fallen or something like that. Uh, maybe they're having some behavior issues. Um, and when you look back, um, you can a lot of times trace the problems back mm -hmm. to a lack of med management. Either medications were missed or uh, the wrong medications were taken, or mm -hmm. too many medications were taken. Um, so I wanted to have you on today to talk uh, specifically about med management. Sounds great. Well, interesting enough, um, over the years, you know, dealing with different medication systems, and we'll talk a little bit, a little bit about different packaging, um, some of the newer packaging that I feel like is very beneficial and really helps patients, you know, become compliant on their medications is what we're trying to strive for. But a lot of folks don't re realize how many folks are affected every year by medication mismanagement. Um, it actually affects 7 million uh, Americans a year, which translates to 3.5 million uh, doctor visits and 1 million visits to the ER. My word. Okay. It's quite a few. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's a, that's, those are, those are mighty big numbers. And when I say that, you know, when I was in the pharmacy business, it was on both ends. And, you know, the first thing I would really like to talk about is medication management in the home. And I want to talk about that, too, because mm -hmm. our goal is to keep people as independent as possible for as long as possible. And sometimes they're not ready to move into an assisted living. You know, I do the placement in assisted livings and you are a fantastic marketer for a great set of communities. Thank you. They're not always ready for that. So right. let's talk about mm -hmm. how we can manage in the home first. Well, I tell you, the I think the, probably the biggest impact or when it when it hit me was early on um, when the pharmacy that I work for began to um, adopt a new medication management system. And what I would do is partner a lot of times with home healths, mm -hmm. which really is kind of your first line of defense. That's our second set of eyes. They would yeah. call us up and just say, for instance, you know, Mr. Smith's having issues at home with his medications. Well, I would actually, you know, let's just say go to Mr. Smith's house, uh, talk with Mr. Smith, and come to find out Mr. Smith is like on eight different medications. Right. Okay. Yep. Well, typically, you know, Mr. Smith is packing his own meds in a Monday through Sunday pill organizer. Mm -hmm. And that might be great if you're on one medication. But what happens in many instances is like, for instance, they'll get him confused. Right. They'll take him at the wrong times, um, which does lead folks sometimes back to the doctor ER visits. Myself, mm -hmm. Julie, now think about this. It was something that hit me early on. I take one medication a day for high blood pressure. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You and I are, yeah. are busy folks. Yeah. Well, what happens is, okay, I'm sitting there. I've got the lid off the bottle. I'm getting ready to take that little center pill. The phone rings. Yes. And okay. Then, then have I have like a 30 minute. Not? Yeah. You get off the phone. After, <laughs> did I take this or not? Then you're pouring them oh out in your hand. Gosh, one, yeah. two, three. And I'm thinking <laughs> to myself, let me put myself in Mr. Smith's shoes. Yeah. Mr. Smith has to take seven medications a day. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Smith might be in his 70s and starting to get a little forgetful. 
oh my gosh, okay, I really get this. And some of these pills that they're taking at that point are, are life altering. I have a client right now, if he doesn't get a certain medication at a certain time of day, within a short window of time, mm-hmm. it it could literally be the end of his life. That's correct. So yeah, that's absolutely right. You're talking about some pretty serious meds sometimes. Pretty serious meds. And as a result of that, um, going to so many patients' homes, one of the things I love the most, Julie, is, you know, you, you walk in there, uh, like, for instance, with this, uh, they call it strip packs now. Mm-hmm. You see this in a lot of assisted livings, but also at home. But you walk in with this box, which I'll explain, you know, the medication uh, packaging that I'm referring to. But, for instance, I'll just set it up for you. Imagine your mind's eye. You walk in, Mr. Smith's there. He's got eight bottles of pills sitting there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're asking him about it. Yeah, Todd, I just forget to take them. Or, or you know, I may have misplaced them. Or I open the box and they fall on the floor. Things like that. Yes. Like a little pill box. Well, mm-hmm. when you come in and introduce something like the strip packs, what I love is with the strip packaging itself is the first tab that pulls up actually has the patient's name on it, but it also has all of the drugs that are listed in the entire package. So you really tear that off. But this is what I love is how these things are packaged is you actually have a breakfast Oh, wow. Package. Look at that. Yeah. You have a lunch. Sometimes you have a bedtime. Okay. So it's prompting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, the... the uh, the recipient, okay, well, look at here. Oh, breakfast. <gasps> Friday, 8 a.m.? And it has all of the medications they're supposed to take for that med pass in one package. Julie, i got to tell you something. Um, I'll give you one example that uh, comes to mind. Went to a gentleman's house. He was a veteran. The gentleman was on 14 medications. Wow, okay. And I introduced <laughs> him to the strip packs. And what I love is when you see that light bulb come on, but I call it the light bulb of relief. Yeah. So what happens is they're looking through going, well, wait a minute, Todd. Okay, breakfast. You, okay, now, wait a minute. Now, now the next one's lunch and the next one's dinner. And, oh, and it starts off tomorrow on Saturday all over again. And, I, and yeah. I want to point this out, too. Mm. I noticed that these are not the same pills for nope. breakfast and lunch That and is dinner. correct. Yep. So, yep. so it's that's individually, yeah. Mm-hmm. The other neat thing about this type of packaging is that it tells you the description mm-hmm. of the medication mm-hmm. in there. So let's say, for instance, it says stool softener. It'll say football-shaped pill. It helps them familiarize what they're supposed to have. But in that particular scenario, when he got it, He literally looked at me and teared up. And I'll tell you flat out, I teared up too. It was relief. He was was so life-changing. And I followed up with that gentleman and the home health within two weeks. No problems. Complying on his medications. I'm like, you know what? Praise the Lord. That's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to keep this gentleman independent as at home as long as we can. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I even had someone recently tell me, um, you know, my eyesight is going bad. And when I'm looking at a handful of pills, I don't know the difference between them. She said, if, if there are different colors, that's helpful. But if I've got three white pills, yeah. she said, I don't know what I've, I've got in my hand even. So I love this. I love this concept. Mm-hmm. And another thing, um, family members have said, well, you know, but mom is struggling to remember to take the pills. And so I have also talked with families about setting up an Alexa reminder that says, "Very smart." Um, you know, you can say, "Alexa, set a reminder every morning to take the breakfast pills." Right. Alexa, set a reminder every lunch to take the lunch pills, and so that's another way that we can help them with that med management piece. So I love that. That's a great idea. I think I, I might start using that, that for my Lucinda Prill. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might. No, I love that. I mean, it's a tool. Why not use it? Yes, exactly. It's a prompt. Exactly. Yeah, you already got it in your house anyway. Yep. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So tell me then, let's say we do have someone that has been doing that, that has worked really well, but now we have other issues and now we do need assisted living. Mm-hmm. Tell me the benefits of med management in assisted living? Well, I will tell you this. When I was, um, when I was with the pharmacy, um, I was part, I would help assist in teaching a six-hour med class. Mm-hmm. And we would do that quarterly, you know, for assisted livings. And 
it led me to do a little bit of research on some common errors and things to avoid, you know, to help out some of the staff, you know, in those assisted livings. But as far as medication management in an assisted living, what I have seen, um, and we do have an example here, what we refer to as the paper MAR, mm -hmm. medication yep, account yep, record yep. or medication yep. observation record, the MOR, which is essential, you know, in assisted living. But the majority of your assisted livings have now gone to a digital platform, yeah. which I love, which I'm going to go a little bit into. Um, with the digital, what I love, some of the things that can occur in assisted living, maybe with medication mismanagement, we're going to talk about positives and the negatives, but some of the negatives is, for instance, think about this. Let's say you have like a 120-bed assisted living. Mm -hmm, you think mm -hmm. sometimes there might be more than one or two James Smiths? Oh, there might be. Like yep. name yep. patients, okay? Yep. Very important. So what I love about these electronic moors is that you can have a picture of the patient on the moor. Oh, that's But important. also, not only do that, but ask the patient's date of birth, so and so forth. That's mm -hmm. what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So misidentification yeah. of patients sometimes is an issue. Um, another issue possibly could be trying to pass meds to one or more patients at one time. No, the rule is it one is patient. No -no. It's a, thank you, ma'am. That's right. a big little slap on the hand there. Do not yep. pass meds yep. to yep. more than one patient at a time. Yeah. Right. And and I know that ACA, our regulating system, mm -hmm. um, when they come and do their inspections mm -hmm. at our communities, they are paying attention to that. They're Absolutely. watching to see how the meds are passed. Mm -hmm. So that because they it's it's everybody's goal to keep our residents safe. In Absolutely. And, and one of the things, too, what I love is when you're passing the meds, you're explaining to them what they're. Mr. Johnson, I'm giving you your aspirin now. Mm -hmm. Watch them drink it. Mr. Mr. Johnson, now I'm giving you your yeah. lisinopril, you know, things like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, that's the proper way to do it. But um, the other thing, too, is, you know, with your with your strip packs is, you know, I always encourage um, especially when I was with the pharmacy, you know, and, and teaching help, you know, assisting with that class is checking the packaging because this packaging mm -hmm. is used mm -hmm. in assisted livings as well. Yes. And also I like to mention, you know, blister packs. That's probably um, when I say, I don't want to use the term archaic in, in an adverse way. It's just the oldest form mm -hmm. besides right. bottles as right. far as pill packs. I don't mind blister packs, especially when it comes to like controlled meds, because in mm -hmm. assisted living, you have to count your controlled meds. With your strip packs, you know, you can't, you typically don't put the controlled meds in the strip, in the pack. strip packs. Right. Yeah, 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 that's correct. But I always encourage staff to check the packaging against your more, whether it be paper or whether right. it be digital. Yeah. Look at everything on the packaging yeah. in this. And then pass those medications, yeah. you know, to the residents. Yeah. So, when you're in an assisted living, um, there's typically someone kind of overseeing your care. You're That's going correct. to have either mm -hmm. a, a licensed nurse, mm -hmm. or you're going to have um, someone that is, uh, you know, clinically bent, and they're kind of watching over your overall care. Mm -hmm. And so they are kind of looking and saying, "Wait a second." Uh, is this med actually canceling out this one? Mm -hmm. Should we be taking, you You mentioned a gentleman that had 14 meds, Thank had you. someone mm -hmm. done some kind of an audit. And is, is there such an animal that people can mm -hmm. ask for? Actually, yes. You can do this at your private pharmacy. Look, folks, I would recommend anybody that's taking three or more medications, mm -hmm. especially let's say for instance, like for your heart, something that we refer to as medication overlap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But your private pharmacy can do it. Your larger pharmacies can do it. But let me give you an example. Let's just use me for an example. Okay. We're doing a little, little uh, pretending here. Let's say for instance, I go to the ER today. I'm having some palpitations. Something's going on. Do mm -hmm. some tests on mm -hmm. me. Send me home with a medication. A couple of weeks later, I might follow up with my primary. Did you go to the ER? Yeah. He might not know what medications they gave me. Right. Okay. Okay, Todd. Well, look, remember. I might not remember. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Um, at 52, I'm starting to I remember so good. But anyway, point is, go to the doctor. Okay. He may give me another medication, not yeah. realizing. Right. All right. Right. All right. Let's just pretend like another three weeks go by. I'm not feeling great. I go to the urgent care. Medication overlap. 
Yes. So right. what can we do about that? Medication profiling. Okay. You can go to your pharmacists. Okay. Okay. Or in an ALF setting, go to the nurse practitioner that's probably coming to your uh, facility or to your pharmacy that you're using. Okay. They do a medication profile. And believe it or not, you know, although pharmacies are in it to make a profit, typically they don't like to overlap or give people too many medications. Having said right. that, I've literally seen folks go from five heart medications to one because they're inadvertently getting overlap. But when you do that medication profile through your pharmacist, okay, where so you're your drugs. So much better for bam. your loved ones. Yeah. Now, yeah. hey, at the end of the day, I'd rather somebody be on less medications. Oh, Let's I face think it. We all oh, we'd love to yeah, be on less medications. Less Absolutely. So if that's something that yeah. can be accomplished, it's as easy as just asking for a medication profile. And they'll say, yeah, you got mm -hmm. this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. This is overlapping one another. Sometimes they're canceling out each other. Sometimes it can give you an adverse drug reaction. Exactly. Yeah. And I've definitely heard of that. And sometimes uh, when people start falling a lot or something like that, it's it's back to those meds. Back to the meds. Yeah. yeah that's right. So, well, I have loved this conversation. Do you? Is there anything else that you think that our viewers would just really benefit from hearing about med management. Well, we talked about some of the negatives. I'm going to end with, with uh, the positives. Okay. The positives that I've seen um, with the ALFs that I worked with, with uh, the, the previous you know, job I was with, with the pharmacy, it was actually pretty far and few between the head med errors. And when yeah. I say that, yeah. I felt like it was proper training. It was proper management. It was people taking the time mm -hmm. to do one patient at a time. Right, And right. I'm happy to say, um, especially when I saw a lot of uh, ALFs adopting this system. And look, I'm not promoting this. I don't make any money off this system. No, I it's don't. It's just don't. based on the end of the day. <laughs> it's it, I have just, I have always loved to promote something that I see that benefits, especially yes. the elderly population. Right. And it worked. I've just seen it so many times change people's mm -hmm. lives. They're compliant now. They're not nervous about taking their medications. Um, that's what I love about it. But, again, when I've seen uh, uh, the ALFs adopt this, the medication errors plummet. There's hardly any medication errors after that, which is what our biggest goal is, Julie. Yeah, is, right. Hey, there's a difference between existing and thriving. Yes. I want my residents exactly. to thrive. So we do. having said that, um, I am Todd with Circle of Life Assisted Living, like Julie had mentioned before. If you ever have any questions regarding medication management or you know regarding assisted living, you can reach out to me at 386-288-1372. Julie, it's been a pleasure today. I, I love these, really these type has. of topics. Yeah, yeah I, really I love like this. talking about this. Yeah. Now, if if a viewer says, hey, mm -hmm. I really want to talk to somebody about these yes. pill options, mm -hmm. um, could they go into Walgreens or CBS or No, where actually can they, they can. Find them? They actually can. Okay. What what most people in the industry call it is strip packaging. Strip strip packaging. packaging. It's not do not use the word blister cuz blisters typically they refer that to the cards. But the majority of your smaller pharmacies, your your privately owned and the larger corporate owned pharmacies mm -hmm. do offer strip packaging now. Wonderful. So just another thing for compliance. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, Todd. And as well as calling Todd, if you have any other questions, you are free to leave comments. And I would love to know what else you guys would like to hear about. Um, please do like us and share us. And, and we look forward to maybe having Todd back again someday. Absolutely. Love to come. Thank you, Julie. Thanks, Todd.